Hi, welcome to lesson 4.06. We're going to continue solving radical equations by hand, making sure to identify uh, any extraneous solutions and also uh, to look at some more complex variations. All right, so to get started, go ahead and copy these problems down and uh, solve each of them on your own. For number two, I will give you a little hint. Start off by squaring both sides and make sure to use the distributive property when you do so. All right, so first with number one, when we square both sides of our equation, we're going to end up with a solution of positive nine. However, before we even squared both sides, we should have noticed that there is never going to be a value x such that the square root of x is a negative value. And so when we do get nine, we need to make sure that we test it uh, and square root of 9 is positive 3, not negative 3. Remember, we discussed that squaring uh, always creates a positive value, hence we run into the possibility of getting an extraneous solution as we have here. So there are no solutions. In the second problem here, I told you to go ahead and square both sides. Now you have to be very careful here. When you square the left side of the equation, you have to square the whole thing. Squaring the right side is pretty seamless. I'm going to end up with 16. But what happens on the left side? Let's go ahead and take a look at the left side a little more closely. So what I've done is I have written uh, this out where I, I've shown what I'm multiplying by itself. When I multiply the first two terms together, notice that they're the same thing. So it'll just be the square root of x plus 4 squared. Well, a square root squared, we know those are inverse operations, and so we'll end up with just x plus 4. Now, next I'm going to multiply square root of x plus 4 times negative square root of x. And that is going to give me negative square root of x plus 4 times square root of x. That's great. I have written that up here. And notice that when I then multiply negative square root of x times square root of x plus 4, I'm going to get that same term again. So I'll have this minus that all over again, and that's going to give me negative 2 of these, as I have written there. Next, I'm going to, and well, actually last, I'm going to multiply negative square root of x times negative square root of x. And again, I have something times itself, and so I'm going to have that something squared. And the square root of x squared is, of course, you guessed it, x. And a negative times a negative is a positive, so here I will have positive x. All right. So notice I can simplify this a little bit because I have x plus x, which is 2x. So I can rewrite this as 2x plus 4 minus 2 times. Now, notice that both of these things are being square rooted. In other words, both of them are being raised to the 1 half power. And so I can just write them as being multiplied together and then raised to the 1 half power or square rooted. So I can rewrite it as x plus 4 times x square root. So notice now I've rewritten this expression that had two radicals with only one. And so now when I come back over here, I'll simply have an equation with one radical expression and I know how to move from there. I'm going to isolate my radical expression and solve. So the first step, I'm going to um, isolate my radical by subtracting 4 and 2x from both sides and then dividing by 2. Doing so will give me the following. That's, of course, after I've simplified the right side considerably. So make sure that you understand how to get to x minus 6. And now I can square both sides and solve. When I square both sides, notice that I'll end up with a quadratic equation. And so I will need to use uh, the quadratic formula in this case to solve. What I want you to do is actually go ahead and carry that out on your own as practice. And you can check that you've done it correct because you will get no real solutions. So make sure that you end up with no real solutions and then go ahead and move on and we'll talk about some of the things we've learned. Right. 
couple of things here. The first is that any time we have an equation of this form where we have the square root of x is equal to negative a, and a is a positive number, so negative times a positive is, of course, a negative, we're never going to have a solution. That's what we saw in that first example there. And secondly, whenever we have more than one radical in an equation, we want to move all the radical expressions to one side, square both sides, obviously be careful when doing so, and then isolate the remaining radical and solve. And that's a tedious process. I, I understand that it can be frustrating, but it is important to do so a couple of times because you will see situations, particularly in calculus, where this will be quite helpful. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get a little practice. Go through and solve each of the four uh, equations here, and you can check that you've done them correctly by going back and trying out your solution. You should also do so to make sure you don't get any extraneous solutions. All right, go ahead and uh, do that, and we'll take a look at them tomorrow.